Well, all right, Chris. Thank hey. you for, uh, folks. That's Chris Styles Bacon, and that was the uh, the underlying theme of the show tonight, as he as he played us in, complete with a little uh, little mouth music as well. Hey, that was you, not Rob, right? Yes. <laughs> right. Rob has picked up some of your your stuff every now and then. Oh, uh, he sounds amazing. In. Yeah, he's getting pretty good. You know, I mean, there I was confused. Well, this is great. This is going to be an amazing show tonight. And Chris, you and I go way back. So right. uh, I know some of, the, some of the best times for us is when you were actually working in the shop and some unsuspecting person would come in and say, hi, I'm kind of interested in a ukulele. And then uh -huh. you zoom on in and uh, uh, play some uke for him and kind of, kind of like you're, even when you're off stage, you're on stage because of your energy. It's it's really wonderful energy, and oh, thank you, it's man. really appreciated. And you know, we've worked together a lot over the years doing sound gigs and stuff. So, anytime we have a chance to do something, man, it's it's fun. It's fun. I don't have to put a lot of thought into it. I just go, "Yep, let's go with it." Oh man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate yeah. you. And I appreciate HMT. You know, what yeah. I'm saying Be, because of um, be, because of the you employing musicians, yeah. I was able. I, I was actually able to transition into becoming a full-time musician because yeah. what what other job will allow you to be able to like hey take your gigs but just let us know in advance where, where, right. where yeah. your gigs are so you know yeah. it made it possible to make that transition so thank you so much well it works because you know if people come in i mean it's like i guess the analogy would be if you go into home depot and you need to know something about you know uh buying a scroll saw and the person looks at you blankly and has no idea what you're talking about well that's not a good transaction so why not have musicians masquerading as salespeople there you go <laughs> so that's what we do all right so what do you got what do you got coming up tell me tell me something that you're working on and then go into the first number oh man well i got i got two two things i could tell you shortly right so yeah. um one of the things is i'm debuting a new song that i wrote about um covid19 and my own experience my personal experience with it and like those around me like uh, uh like native washingtonian like black dc perspective and that is going to debut on NPR Morning Edition wow. and, um, in early August, y'all. So look out for that. It's going to be great, man. I'm like I'm like putting the final touches on this stuff right now, mixing and mastering it. And, um, so that's happening. And um, an ongoing now, wait, is, project. Is that oh, all, yeah. you, all you on all the instruments? Like you're literally you're sheltered down doing all of it? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I'm putting together, I'm putting together everything. You know, I'm playing the guitar. I'm... <laughs> I'm beatboxing. I'm um, I'm writing string parts and stuff, and using yeah. like good like good like um, synthesizer software and stuff like that. Good virtual instruments that that sound like cool like string section stuff. It's yeah. really nice. Technology's come a long way. <laughs> All right. What's the other thing you were gonna mention? Oh yeah, the other one. So I have an ongoing project called Beatbox Remix. So if you type in Beatbox B E A T B O X Remix dot com. Man, it's a it's a project where I'm using just my first instrument, the human beatbox, to connect and collaborate with with musicians from around the world on mm. a weekly basis. And so I've been putting out these videos. Of course, with COVID nineteen happening and all that stuff, yeah. it's it's changed it up a little bit, so it, it's not as frequent. But check that out, man. You'll see me performing with musicians from China, from um from Senegal, from India, and all that mixing together their traditional music with beatbox using hip-hop go-go and all these things so it's it's like a world music type of thing i i think i saw a hint of that years ago when we did that gig where you had an indian violin player yes. from india yep and it was amazing it was amazing thank you uh, man so also uh, things to notice you'll see when when chris starts performing along the bottom the crawler so to speak well these are ways you can get direct uh direct payments to uh, to Chris so please support the uh, support the artists it's really really important these are the only gigs we have for the most part <laughs> so yeah you can see it on the crawler there Rob's got it all right so all right, we blabbed enough let's go into some music I right, this like the shortest conversation we ever had, Dave. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we go we go in, man. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, here we go. Um. 
Let's see. I was trying to think about what piece I'm going to do for y'all this evening, right? So look, COVID-19, right? You know, we have all these things happening. We have to really embrace being um, being separate, but still have a, t a, a sense of being together. And, um, so one of those things that is that is like at the center of this is um is Wi-Fi. And so I thought that I would share this song that I wrote a while ago called chilling for the wi-fi it's about it's about like dating and courtship when someone's like gold digging when they're trying to use you for whatever natural resource you have my friends so in this case it's someone using you for something as simple as your wireless your wireless internet con connection all right so look i'm gonna say something then you say wi-fi you could type it in the comment section so do all that stuff all right we're gonna do call and response you know when it's your time all right <laughs> My friend the other day told me about this new place right next to the Indian spot they call Bombay. It's this new cafe around the way, plus the Wi Fi is great. It's going down slim just like Pompeii. So I gathered my caput and maneuvered to the place. Riding the bicycle, so I always got the parking space. I stepped in, set the bag in the chair, pulled out the mobile device, and checked in on Four Square. The cute lady across from where she sat, slinked over and asked her, What type of phone is that? Is that the iPhone? She said, Aren't they smaller than that? I got the case on it with the extra battery pack. Then we started politicking about tech news and business. 30 minutes into it, we got the same interest. I asked her what the order since she here all the time. She said, um, I never eat here. I'm just chilling for the Wi-Fi. She never eat here. She just chilling for the Wi-Fi. She never eat here. She just chilling for the Wi-Fi. Chilling for the Wi-Fi. Left covers from five guys. She never eat here, she just chillin' for the Wi-Fi Chillin' for the Wi-Fi, left the for five guys She never eat here, she just chillin' for the Wi-Fi We chatted on Facebook on a night real late She said she painted for a living and did some real estate So that makes us both full-time artists on the ground We dated during the days cause we ain't got the nine to fives But if she pickin' the place, it's like business day Spots with free internet and ice lattes So on most days, we walkin' around With her Dell laptop that weighs 85 pounds In the restaurant with her computer on the table she said it's cause her phone isn't in and that enabled and then she started chilling at my crib more often when i got the broadband hooked up in my apartment her brother's getting click calls like a surgeon cause she doesn't want to chat she just has to meet in person shorty's in my crib searching google every night i'm starting to think honey is chilling with me for the wi-fi i swear the shorty chilling with me for the wi-fi I think the shorty chillin' with me for the Wi-Fi, chillin' for the Wi-Fi, left the woods for five guys. I swear the shorty chillin' with me for the Wi-Fi, chillin' for the Wi-Fi, purchasing man terror time. I swear the shorty chillin' with me for the Wi-Fi. Now I'm getting skeptical about this girl I've known So I started investigating like Sherlock Holmes Cause ever since I got the broadband with the fiber optics I get surprise visits for her on my door knocking So I called her up, told her meet me at the crib now She packed up her laptop, then she slid around now Would I really be up in the crib lonesome If her brother was the type that had a dial up modem Well it's time to figure out why we chilling in the house Oh I forgot to tell you babe the internet is out She paused and said is it a problem with your router? Nah I had to put the Build money on the power. Shorty started packing up her bags. Y'all, she didn't stop. Got a laptop and broke out like the chicken pox. Told my mom's about it. Now she asking me why. I said, Mom, she didn't love me. She was chilling for the Wi Fi. Modern Thank relationships. You. Modern relationships. It's true. modern. <laughs> yeah. Right, we got a good shout out from John Carroll, who's hey, all the John way up Carroll. in Massachusetts. And he's definitely chilling for the Wi Fi. Uh, hey. he, knows, he knows how important that is. Yeah, that's true. Um, the bandwidth gets crowded, you know. The the tough get going. <laughs> so, exactly. Yep. Huh. All right. What what what's next? What do you got? Oh, another piece for you. Ooh. Yeah, let's yeah. See. You can... let's see. I'm a I'm a pick up this here drum. And I'm gonna do a song. Um, let's see. Huh. Here here are your options. 
I was thinking I could do a song about an awful haircut. Or I could do a song about DC's interest in public transit system. Oh, the awful haircut. You know, it's the bowl cut, right? Okay, Vamala, let's do it. Uh, oh, that, give the history of this song a little bit first, because it's, it's, I mean, many of us <laughs> could definitely use the bowl cut right now. All right. So, man, let me tell you. Oh, yeah, everybody's doing, bo yo, people get doing the crazy cuts right now. I mean, lucky for me, I just have a fro. I just got to pick it and pat it, and it's really <laughs> simple. But, like, um, I so look, this is the bow cut. The bow cut is when you take a bow up, right, and you put it on your head, you use it as the mold to cut off, cut off everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, my mom, she used to give us bow cuts around this time. Um, so, we were constant bow cut recipients. Here's why. Uh... <laughs> My mom, she would cut me and my older brother's hair and, um, because she didn't want to spend all this money. It was sure. like $20 a head, right? So it was $40 every two weeks. And, you know, we in the projects and stuff like that. You know, we couldn't do that. So my mom <laughs> said, I'm going to do it myself. I do your sister's hair all the time and she looks fresh. Like my mom would hook up my sister's hair, like, you know, send the plaits, all that stuff, you know, baby hair gelled up. And um, so my sister would look fresh. But with our hair... She was like, I'm going to get some clippers, DIY, I'm doing it myself. So she get these cheap clippers, and she was going to do it. Now, this is going to be a first time with, with our mom, like, cutting our hair like this. We knew when it was time for us to get our hair cut because we lived across the street from our elementary school. And um, when you leave elementary school and you dab up all your friends and stuff, you look across the street, you see a chair in the middle of the front yard. And she'll cut <laughs> your hair in front of the entire school leaving. Oh, man. Just because she didn't want to sweep up the hair in the kitchen. She was <laughs> like, oh, I cut this in the breeze. I'm good, you know? So so she before she cut her hair, she was like, I'll be right back. She went in the kitchen, got this Cool Whip bowl. And I didn't know it. Um, we would use this for countless bowls of cereal after the Cool Whip was done. But then she turned the bowl <laughs> upside down. I'm like, that's that's against like that's yeah. against everything I know the bowl to do. It's supposed to hold things. Like, what's going on? And then she puts the bowl on her head. So this afro, then all the hair comes down the sides, and then she has the bowl on, and then <laughs> cuts off all the hair on the sides. So then it's nothing right here. So it looks like you don't have any hair. Then you pull that bowl off your head. Then <laughs> that's a surprise. And yeah. You got to school the next day with this little cap on and we get there and the, um and the teacher's like boy take that head off your head take the head off the head and then the the bow cut comes out and people are like ah my man got the bow cut and so i wrote this song because the heal from this traumatic experience so that's take it bow away. Cut. that is both take it away all right you can catch this on the album of mine too called chris styles bacon in concert and this and it's a live recording actually of um of this song at the Kennedy Center. And it mixes together um, Krishna Ramdas, who plays the tabla um, instead of congas, uh, mixing together North Indian classical music, Hindustani music on the tabla. And so check that out. It's quite the blend. Here we go, my friends. Without further ado, bow cut using a, using a djembe slash doom back. All right. And a little go-go pocket. Here we go. Back in 1995, a brother was never fly. When I came home from school and saw that chair outside, boom box in the window, clippers on the side. That's when mom decides that it's haircut time. That's how it is. You broke and your pops ain't there, so your mom volunteers to save money and cut your hair. You wish you could hit up the barber shop with your friends instead of moms leaving these patches behind my ears. The middle of the month, we be scraping for paper, dreaming we had to fade or the temple tapers. The fresh haircuts, finna fly in the school cut. The shape up precise like they did it with a ruler But back on the south side Chairs sitting outside Mom got them clippers hot And I'm like why? She cut my hair low Said you good to go And shaped up the sides with a cool whip bow I got the bow cut You got the bow cut Oh, when the cash is low You got the bow cut And your pops ain't home He got the bow cut I got the bow cut he got the bow cut. I went to school the next day and people thought I went bald. Then they took my cap off. Then they was like, yo, looking like Toad from Mario Kart. My neck cold. I laced it with some Miracle Grow. Now everybody act jokes at my school. Fair be hope. Fellas do the most. Slap your head, then they ghost. Girls see your head, then they laugh for they boat. Teachers put you on the spot, then you get roast. I don't even say nothing. I just fade to the back rocking all black like they're the techies in between the acts but when i got home it's like a whole nother world my mom said betcha you was getting them girls yeah getting them girls a laugh when i step in their path i wish i could put my entire head in the cast my mom said chris you shouldn't worry about that man i'm eating vegetables until my head grow back i got the bowl cut he 
got the bowl cut. I win the cash is low, he got the bowl cut. Moms ain't feeling the fro, he got the bowl cut. I got the bowl cut. I got the bowl cut. Hold up, feet on the side, the top looks like a donut. Now you know what it is after school when you roll up. Mom got them clippers, next day he didn't show up. Try to style it up, ask moms to put a part on the lower left side. Now it look like Noah's Ark. Now cats laughing at your boy, reaching for their Kodaks. Cause the next day I came to school with the Kojak. Vaseline on it, you could see the sheen on it. Kids say, it look like Mr. Clean, don't it? The next month came, I tried to hide my mom's clippers. She came out of the crib with some kindergarten scissors and cut off the sides. Your boy's outside with a land of lakes bowl on my head and i can't hide my mom said i'm gonna hook you up this time then on the back of my neck she drew the nike sign i got the bowl cut thank you my friends this is this is just a wonderful song i mean it's it's preserving and, and it relates i'm sure to you're not the only person that got a bowl cut and in the last couple months we couldn't find anybody to do our bowl cuts we needed your mom around I mean, my would have did. Mom I got know. experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just a great song. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, all right, what else are you thinking about? We got got to do one more. One more. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, why don't I do that thing about public transit? Yeah, yeah. I right, here we go. This is about a famous and infamous, a famous and infamous, uh, infamous bus route in D.C. called the X-2. If you know about the X-2 and you have, you have experienced the X-2 before, put it in the comments section, my friends. Put it in the comments section. I want to know what, what's going down and how many people know. So this is a bus route in D.C. The reason why I chose to write a song about this bus route in D.C. because um the X-2, really interesting. It goes from... um. It goes from in front of the White House, so it's on, it's it's right right outside of there, and um and it takes you all the way like across the city, straight up heading eastbound, and it takes you straight up to the hood, southeast Minnesota Avenue, northeast area, all of that, and it's really interesting to see how the demographics switch, who gets on the bus, who gets off the bus, at what stops. It's it's a really interesting way to see the city and see how um diverse. And um, in different the city is D.C., Washington, D.C. All right. So, my friends, you have a job here. All my stuff requires call and response. It's something that we do in the style of music that comes from my city, Washington, D.C., called Go-Go. It's a style of music um, that, that um, actually has its birthplace before has its birth before hip-hop. So it predates hip-hop. It's in the 70s. It comes from funk music. It's created by a guy named Chuck Brown. And it uses call and response and polyrhythms all the time. So the audience is very important. And so we can't really do that, right, in the same way because, um, you know, I can't hear y'all. But y'all can put it in the comment section, so do it in the comment section. I'm going to say what we riding on. I need you to say X2, all right? I'll type X2. All right, I'm going to start you off first. Here we go. <clears throat> When I'm writing no, come on, X2, when I'm writing no, come on, X2, when I'm writing no, ah, X2, when I'm writing no, ah, X2, when I'm writing on the southeast, X2, we'll be writing on the northeast, X2, hey. First stop is in front of the White House, then across the bridge over to my house, south side and the northeast borderline, Minnesota Avenue and the orange line. So you know we need the double bus, so we gon' double up, 5408s, articulate a bus and the summer gets crazy. Your close the window if you can't feel the AC, yo it's the WMATA, on 7th Street and Gallery Place. On the back of the bus you see shorty spitting sunflower seeds on the floor while you hearing no eating on the PA. See the bus is packed but we in here, so we gotta make space for the wheelchair. On the packed bus heading east bound and we praying to God that the junk don't break down, but I'm riding on, come on X2. We we'll riding on ah, X2. We we'll riding on. Come on, X2. We we'll be riding on once again. X2. We we'll be riding on in southeast. That's two. We we'll be riding on in northeast. Take a ride on the X2 bus, sitting in the middle on a weekend in the evening cause the bat will keep it crunk. Out of town I say I don't do that stuff, on the X2 bus, y'all they do too much. I can't say I ain't seen fist to cuffs or cast of handcuffs kicked out for going nuts with a public bus. Get the tough and the pretty, and all that other stuff that comes up in the city. 86 native, been riding buses before I could say them. Never had licenses or demonstrative lesson. When cash is low, you gotta roll so the bus is a blessing. Plus when you take your time, you can exercise up in the morning when you run for it. Mr. X2, not the L2, you want another route, we'll try and tell you. We'll be riding on, come on X2, we'll be Riding on 
X2 will be writing on. Come on, X2 will be writing on. Ah, X2 will be writing on and stop, please. We'll be writing on and off, please. Ratting dope, that's hat price. The metro train on those days you can't afford the subway from the hood to the head of state. And the kids with the cell phone serenades, it goes White House Gallery Place. Row with me, New York Avenue, H Street, Horse and Dickies, Heck and Jamal, Ben and Row, by the golf course, RFK, cross the bridge. Now we back home, we ratting on. Come on, X2. Thank you, my friends. Yes, Thank indeed. You. Little uh, DC Transit GPS. <laughs> oh yeah it's figured right out the x2 it reminds me that um our mutual friend trevor higgins uh, yes. told me that there's a bus it's actually called this in in wheaton and i've actually now seen it it's the l8 so if you look at it it's <laughs> the bus is late l8 wow <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's accurate <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's why he brought it up yeah well, Chris, that was great. We're going to bring you back for one around the uh, at the end of the at the end of the show here. We do a little encore piece. Oh, I would do a special freestyle. I'm gonna do a special <laughs> freestyle for y'all at the end. So we're gonna take ten random words and freestyle them and create a song on the spot. So get All your right. words ready, and I'm gonna catch you on the finale. All right, thank you, Chris. And now we're gonna go over to Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Hey, how's it going? All right, hi everybody. All right. Dennis is allowing me to wear my Yankee hat. He's he's that good uh. a guy. Oh, oh, there we man. go. But I'll keep this close yeah, nearby, by just yeah. in case for ward emergencies. Off, ward off evil spirits. Uh, you know, I, I figured I'd wear a hat because everybody in the promo shots were wearing hats. So That's know, right. It looks uh, good on you, man. Well, thanks. Yeah, It's you fine. Know. You know, you grew yeah. up around here. I won't begrudge you that. Yeah. You That's know, fine. I probably could use a bowl cut, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> All right. So, you know, actually, I saw you playing clarinet as part of... Tune supplies. It was like a two and a half or three hour show. That's right. Was that the, that was the Mother's Day show? I think the, so. Yeah, it just went. And Father's a couple of buddies of mine are Celtic musicians, so you know I tuned in to watch that, and I thought, oh, this is great. I'm, you know, I think you only had one tune. Everybody had one tune. I think that's right. Uh, and it was, yeah, that was an amazing oof. thing to be a part of. It was like. 30 artists maybe 40 i don't know was... i think it was something like 40 on that first one and yeah. then the father's day special um in yeah. june they had over 90 and that was over Whew. three hours long yeah but yeah, uh, i think the, the person tying it together sort of emceed it yeah for quite Caitlin. a while yeah, yeah it was great and yeah then, she's an old friend of mine when i first moved to new york close to 20 years ago um i was playing more mandolin and fiddle more so than clarinet even though i also played clarinet since i was a yeah. kid and had studied it in college and everything and i fell in with the bluegrass scene and also started going to a lot of traditional irish sessions around town so i got to be friends with with a whole scene of people my age um who were playing traditional music at the time around new york city and then a couple of years after that i fell in with with people my age who were playing early jazz and traditional jazz and swing around town. And then that really took off and has become the biggest part of what I do. But I've still kept up and kept in touch with all my friends from the traditional yeah. Irish scene. And any time I get a chance to, to do something in any way with them, it's, it's always a treat. And that Tune Supply Irish Mother's Day special was, was a great yeah. honor to so be, that was, uh, to be I, a part of. That's the explanation that, of course, I, I wasn't aware of that. I'm just sitting back, you know, listening to... You know, all the Celtic tunes, one after another, great player. Then then you sure. pop in going, wait, where'd this come from? And so that's yeah, a great I explanation. The, uh, I was the variety in the variety you were, you show, were, I guess. Yeah. Um, does, any other musicians caught up in that crossover? I mean, I guess you could say, in a sense, Grisman. I mean, because oh, he's he yeah, easily. I mean, Absolutely. I don't, I I don't mean, think of he's... him as a Celtic musician, but he's certainly between his... Uh, uh, Yiddish tradition, Jewish tradition, and, and obviously the bluegrass. And he's the jazz. a guy who's, yeah. who's really jumped around a lot in his career and done a ton of things. And he's been a hero of mine since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, just, you know, huge mandolin hero, but also just a music hero. And the musicians that I tend to love the most and, and gravitate towards are ones who can kind of seamlessly like kind of weave between worlds yeah. and make it all seem cohesive and in a beautiful way. I'm also just magnetically drawn to bizarre or uh, unusual or unexpected collaborations. Um, sure. Like for example, I would say 
um, one of right. the greatest yeah. recordings of all time for sure is the recording that Jimmy Rogers and Louis Armstrong made together in 1930. There's a clip of I that hope, in, the, yeah, in the Ken Burns in the Ken Burns uh, country music documentary. There's a quick clip of that. Yep. Yeah. So that's a little off topic from the uh, from the Celtic and and swing yeah. and jazz crossover. But I just I love where all these worlds collide. There was so much less kind of genre division between musicians a hundred years ago, yeah. and even even more recently than that, for sure. People just played music, and and they weren't as concerned necessarily with what it was called until the recording industry decided that everything had to be in these neat little packages, um, yeah. neat little right. packages, and things got divided and chopped up a little more, and it became less kind of marketable in some ways to to be playing a blend of things everything had to have its own its own special name yeah and then the, there's also the economic side for you where if you if you can excel in in more than one genre it's going to get more gigs you know i mean it's, well there's no you know it's worked out well i've managed to stay very yeah. busy with gigs up until four months ago of course well, yeah right but but it's it's, it's a double-edged sword i mean i play a lot of different instruments and a lot of different styles and I've known since I was a kid, people have told me, and they're right, that to be the absolute best at a thing, you need to just focus on that and make it your, your one and only thing and, and put everything you can into it. And I could just never choose. I just wanted to keep collecting more and more. And it's taken me a long time to get to a point where I feel like I just kind of blend them all together and throw yeah. them all into something that's somewhat uh, cohesive. For a long time, I was just striving to be like a really good traditional bluegrass mandolin player and then a traditional jazz clarinet player and then to do everything kind of by the book. And it's, it's just, I love just throwing them all together and seeing what happens. Yeah, well, I mean, what you may be really good at, so to speak, to keep in that phrase is you may be a really good session musician where you can, you can do charts and then you can do bluegrass licks. <laughs> You know, one after well, the other, and uh, yep, I can. I can yeah. get in there with a bunch of instruments and 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 charge through a session and do a bunch of things. Yep. All right, so we're gonna with that. we're gonna move away from me. I'm gonna call everybody's attention to the crawler at the bottom. Uh, this is the way you get in in touch with Dennis. Uh, send money, uh, even if you don't really feel you know him personally, and you like what you heard. Send him money if you know him personally. Make a donation. You know, it's it's an equal opportunity uh, employer here. Just uh, send something and support the gigs. Thank this you, folks. Is, these are the gigs. All right. That's right. Take it away. Give us, give us something. Okay. I'm going to take out my earbuds right now. I'm going to play you a song that I only started playing recently. This is a, a huge pop hit and country hit from a number of decades ago. Don't Fence Me In by Cole Porter. Speaking of crossovers, this is a, uh, a, a pop songwriter who wrote a huge number of what became jazz standards and and the american songbook essentially and he wrote this country song that became one of his biggest hits and it was he would say it was his least favorite of his compositions but i absolutely love it and i think in these times when everybody's all cooped up at home because of quarantines and whatnot we all just want to be somewhere we're not i think don't fence me in is an appropriate sentiment <laughs> skies above don't fence me in let me ride through the wide open country that I love don't fence me in let me be by myself in the evening breeze listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees send me off forever but I ask you please don't fence me in oh turn me loose let me straddle my old saddle underneath the western sky on my cayuse let me wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise I want to ride 
to the ridge where the west commences gaze at the moon till i lose my senses i can't look at hobbles and i can't stand fences don't fence me in Yes, indeed. I see a, and hear a mandolin played like that, and I look at the extended fingerboard on that. A lot <laughs> oh, of times, this is my, yeah. this is my red diamond right here. I'm thrilled about this instrument. Yeah, and it, and you make use of the extended fingerboard. A lot of people, when they look at them in my shop, they go, "Yeah, I'll never play down there." I'm gonna. Ah, it's good that it's got it, but you were. <laughs> Well, if it's there, you might as well use it might once well in a while, Might as well go for right? it. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Thank it's, you. Uh, how old is that instrument? That instrument Colin? is from the from the 90s. It's made by Don McGrosty uh, in Ohio. He's a wonderful builder, and I was lucky enough to find this um, used um, about 10 or 11 years ago at Great. Retrofrets in Brooklyn, which is the only way I could afford it. It was sure. either that or or a pretty nice car. So yeah. <laughs> I made my choice, and, and I regret nothing. It's a no, beautiful it's, instrument. And you, you bring it out. It's so, it's so beautifully voiced. And, and, you know, that towards the end of that tune where the, the bass notes are sort of the counterpoint to the melody, and you've got the... It's beautiful. I mean, it's... Thank you. I mean, you know, has he ever... Has the maker ever heard you play it? I don't know if he has. Um, we haven't been in touch much. I called him yeah. about a couple of repair issues um early on but i haven't been in touch with him in a long time great all right no. what's next what, what's next on the oh, menu okay well i'll jump over to the clarinet now and uh i am a huge fan of bob wills and the texas playboys speaking of people hearkening back to our earlier conversation about about melding genres what i love about western swing is that the great players back in the day, and the innovators were just taking everything good that was going on in American music and throwing it all together into, into a big jumbled heap. And somehow it was just incredibly toe-tapping and vibrant and cohesive. So here we go with a tune I got from Bob Wills. This one is called Time Changes Everything. He wrote this somewhere in between, I think, his fifth and sixth divorces or thereabouts within a period of six or seven years, which is very impressive, especially considering how prolific he was with recording and acting in movies at the time. And uh, so I'm going to give this one a little bit of a different treatment here because I can't sing and play the clarinet at the same time for obvious reasons. Here we go. There was a time when I thought of no other and we sang our own love's refrain. Our hearts beat as one as we had our fun, but time changes everything. 
When you left, my poor heart was broken. Our romance seemed all in vain. Now the dark clouds have gone and there's blue skies again. Cause time changes everything. <laughs> Time has passed and I have forgot you. Mother Nature does wonderful things. I guess that it's true for both me and for you that time changes everything. <laughs> You can change the name of an old song, rearrange it and make it swing. I thought nothing would stop me from loving you, but time changes everything. So good luck to you, may God bless you. I can't say I won't love again. But you've gone your way, so now I'll go mine. Cause time has changed everything. Cause you've gone your way and I'll go mine Cause time changes everything <laughs>
instrument, this pear shaped specifically, that National only made for three years from 1927 to 29. And I vowed that day to get one someday. And this came to me a couple of years ago. I found it for sale, picked it up, knowing for sure that I would never have enough opportunities to play it on gigs for it to be financially worth it. No. And then the pandemic hit, and I find myself making all these multi-track recordings and videos where I need a lower pitched instrument than mandolin for playing all these chords. And I've probably played this thing on 80 or 90 videos in the past few months, and it's just been a total workhorse and, and a total joy to play. Yeah. So, so with, with that one is an actual older original. It's not a new yeah. one by the National Resophonic yep. Company. Serial number 118 from 1927, made by National. Yep, amazing. Yep. Great find. I love it, yeah. So this is a tune by the guitarist Nick Lucas, who was an Italian-American from Newark, New Jersey, who came out with a, a recording that some have credited it as being the first instrumental solo jazz guitar record that was in, I think, 1925, I'm pretty sure. And maybe it was 22. Well, some guitar nerds out there are going to give me a hard time about that right there. But anyway, he was an incredible player. He later had, uh, had a lot of success as a pop vocalist and songwriter. But among, among um, vintage guitar nerds, he's always known as being an absolutely brilliant um, picker. And here's a tune that he wrote. Uh, one side of the record was picking the guitar. The other side was teasing the frets. And I have adapted uh, his version of it on the six string guitar for this four string tenor guitar right here. Here's teasing the frets. <laughs>
that's got a lot of stuff going on in there sonically, doesn't it? You can <laughs> reach in at sort of different parts of it. Yeah, it's, there's a lot uh, going on. Those kind of multi-part man. songs like that that came out of the ragtime tradition and, and kind of got swooped up in, in early styles of jazz, that's, that's definitely not uh, uh, in style right now, but that's what was going on back then, and I just I love that composition and uh, man, have a great it, time playing it. It's great. I'm glad you got that instrument. I thought you were going to say it might have come from Mandolin Brothers. Uh, no, I have bought stuff there yeah. back in the day, but I miss, uh, I miss those guys. Yeah, I do so. for sure. Well, great. Listen, uh, please make sure you donate to all our artists. I mean, you are getting you're getting tremendous artistry tonight. As that's our mission, uh, preserving and promoting folk music and its culture, so we can put a lot under that umbrella. So, speaking of putting a lot under that umbrella, man. We have some Wranglers in the house. Uh, Ruthie and the Wranglers are on screen now, and I'll let you figure out which one's Ruthie. And then, uh, then we have Andy <laughs> and Tom. Tom on percussion. There we go. And uh, this is exciting. It's, uh, not often I get to, to hear my neighbor play. So <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> it's really... Whew. Um, Thank you so much. So we, we, I came to your show a couple of weeks ago. It was outdoor in the backyard. And that's when we came up with this idea. And I said, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So you, you took it, you're taking a chance. And, you know, I just, again, watched the uh, Ken Burns series. And I can see how that important that music is to your music, combining rockabilly and rock and country. Absolutely. There aren't that many bands. And after watching that series, realizing we're not living in the 1940s or the 1950s or even the early 60s anymore, there aren't too many bands doing what you three are doing. You know, they, they kind of plug into a more, I don't want to use the word narrow, but more focused into one of those styles. But you're covering all of it. And Yeah, it can be a little tricky trying to market it because it's yeah. so varied. <laughs> You know, every now and then, when we, we usually have a five-piece band with Bill Starks and sometimes Arch Alcantara. And every now and then, you're like, we're throwing in a surf instrumental, which, you know, sounds great on an electric guitar with, with a full kit, but we won't be doing that tonight. No. But yeah, it's a pretty wide variety of what we do. And you have all these different artists on, especially tonight. I love the lineup tonight. Yeah. I mean, Chris yeah, Stiles, really Bacon, cool. <laughs> and Dennis Lichtman. Um, it's just a wonderful company to be in. Howdy, dudes. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I'm a big uh, fan. So you're going to give us three songs in a row, and, and hopefully you're going, to, you're going to tap into some different styles. We'll, uh, we are, yeah. Okay, so take it away. Tell us, tell us what we're going to do here. All right, this one is called So Long. It was written by Max Evans and Janine Wilson, and we decided to lift it from them because we liked it so much. And here we go.
So long. <laughs> so long. Bye bye. Oh man, that's a great tune. Now, see, I don't know if I've heard you play that. Maybe I've heard you play it in a. We've only played it a few times. Okay, good. So it wasn't me just not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, we shared a couple um, New Year's Eve parties with Janine Wilson and her band, and in Alexandria, and uh, we used to do that song together. And then we said, "Hey, let's just do it." When she ain't even here. <laughs> That's right. You know, I want to comment, uh, compliment also Andy on his playing on that. Um, Thank you, David. You know, I, I, I heard a, a, what came to mind was a comment about Jerry Garcia playing acoustic guitar. And the comment was when Jerry plays acoustic, he's still got a lot of his electric chops which come through on the acoustic. And when I was listening to you, I, I heard the same same response basically and then keith richards made a similar comment about playing an acoustic guitar he said you know you can take an acoustic guitar to bed with you it's that important you don't <laughs> want to do that with an electric guitar but an acoustic <laughs> guitar you can snuggle with no 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 i'd be afraid i'd roll over on that thing. yeah really <laughs> yeah especially with keith oh well anyway oh but you mean the guitar it's nice to hear andy playing acoustic because we never get to hear him really play acoustic I know, yeah it's super fun, fun. Yeah, I do. So. I do play it kind of a, in an electric style, but yeah. I try to. I try it's to. Perfect. I try to get the acoustic-y stuff in too. Yeah, that's no, great. All right, what do you got next? What do you got next? We're gonna do a song that I wrote long, long time ago that um, I want to do because it sounds so pretty on acoustic. And uh, you should just imagine yourself sitting around a campfire with a Ruthie and the Wranglers banner in the background. <laughs> 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 it's called "Tomorrow We Will Ride the Cowgirl's Prayer." A golden glow is on the sage, shadows growing long and wide, cactus climbing high into the desert painted sky. Distant whistle in a wind from off afar. When I wake, the sun will make my troubles all subside. I shed my fears.
tomorrow tomorrow we will ride again. Love that, Andy. Sounded great. Thank you. So drummers out there, take take a listen to what Tom is doing on drums because uh, yes, Tom has note. been playing Tom has been playing drums long enough where he remembers a time when the when the kick drum was not considered a solo lead instrument. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And you notice how he's filling and it's got everybody kind of in a hot tub rather than trying to be a big wave blowing everybody out of the room and you can't hear anybody else. That's so right. It's a real credit to I you got know. that I get that from Levon Helm. His philosophy yes. always was his job was to was to make it was to support the song. Was that's yeah. his job. It wasn't to be a some wild instrument in the time, you know, it was to support the rhythm and make sure the song was good. It, it seems obvious, but as you know, you've walked into a lot of gigs where you, you can't hear anything but 70% drums. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. In my old age, I've gotten to, uh, I've gotten fond of saying, I really hate cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a drummer. Yeah, I like good. when you uh, pour your heart out all night singing and people just look like they're having the best time and at the end they'll go, man, you guys were great. I just wish I could have heard your voice. Yeah, I couldn't understand <laughs> the lyrics. <laughs> right. Oh, they man. were great. So Susan Rowe, uh, who's listening and making comments, she says, maybe it's time for you guys to do a uh, an unplugged album, the three of you. Oh, yeah. And, you know, maybe throw in a stand-up bass and uh, I'll support that. Okay. So, um, yeah. You heard Acoustic. that. He's going to support that yeah yeah <laughs> yes. that's a tricky word you know thanks dave <laughs> show me the money because we are a little low on cash well it's the imt cares act <laughs> that, exactly yeah that's right <laughs> but actually that's a good time to remind people that as you see on the bottom of the screen uh there's lots of different ways to give uh, ruthie money and she will <laughs> she will take it in in all sorts of forms uh you know jewelry just, uh, yeah jewelry would cash. be good Cash. Ride, rides home. Uh, old old instruments, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, but seriously, folks. I mean, this is this is income now for a lot of musicians, and the only income until hopefully things loosen Sad up a bit. So. Sad but true. We'll we'll probably uh, be the last ones to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got? What's what's next? Um, I'm going to do a song that I wrote about my favorite subject. Food? <laughs> no, it's not food, but that is a close second. I mean, I like food the beer? most. Beer? But no. No, not beer. No, I'm going but, the wrong whiskey but either. There's way more material on this subject. Okay. In my opinion, it's called. It's. It's about men. That would be my favorite subject. It's called. You gotta tell them what they oughta. You ready?
a problem with us guys you, you have nailed it <laughs> it's true it's not about all men just not as no no no, no just every man <laughs> yeah right every man oh man uh so now we're gonna shift seamlessly into the encore piece so instead of having you come oh. back later this will be your fourth piece which will be the encore everybody's okay. you, you've left the stage you've come back you're amazingly right in place Ooh, are we sweating <laughs> And I want to mention a couple things first. By the way, thank you for that standing ovation. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, yeah, they were. All, everybody was up. A couple people I, I split. Assume. A couple people left early because they want to get to the bathroom or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's true. Um, let's see, where was I? Yes, imtfolk.org. That's the uh, the sponsoring organization. And uh, if you if you have some extra extra ducats, extra funds. After you've taken care of the musicians, uh, please make a donation to IMT. Uh, it it makes, makes us all feel really good if there's a little more to go around. Uh, and the other thing is the next IMT show uh, is a, a Tuesday. They're going to be Tuesdays now, August 4th. Uh, and one of, the, one of the artists has been commenting and listening in, especially when Dennis played clarinet. And of course, Ruthie, that would have been Seth Keibel. So Seth and uh, Seth is listening, and uh, he'll be performing. One part of the show will be Seth and Flo Anito, which is great. The two of them, giants among their field. They're, They're great uh, together. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it just wouldn't be right to not have a banjo. So we're going to have Jake Blunt playing banjo and fiddle. And if you have one banjo before you know it, uh, you got another banjo player. <laughs> So we're going to have from one of the founding members of Solus, uh, Seamus Egan, uh, who plays a tenor banjo, which is very different than old-time five-string. Oh, yeah. So that's coming up 8-4. That's our commercial announcement. I, I think it's also, maybe, should we have Rob poke his head in for a minute and so we can thank him Absolutely. for the great job on engineering? Thank Rob. There he is. He's poking in. Rob. Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. Thanks for all your help, Rob. <laughs> You're the best. Yes, indeed. And his great band. I'm all right. Amy. I'm all right. No, it's you're better great. than all right. So, this is this has been fun. So, hey Dave. Yes. Since we're gonna go into another song, it'd probably be a good time for me to mention a couple things, if you don't mind. Uh, it's your show. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to. I don't know if you all can see this. I can't really see it myself. It's probably a CD. I think it's. Oh, hey, I played a couple. All wrangled up. 
I played a couple cuts of that last I week. I know, on WOWD. Thank you so much. Sure. And um, it's a compilation of many um, recordings from over the years. And um, we figured that was a nice way to get people a lot of music for a low cost. And uh, you can get those from me directly. Um, find me on Facebook or um, on our website, but also, which is ruthieandtherangler.com. But uh, you can also go to Amazon.com, and there's probably many, many other places you can find it. YouTube, YouTube I mean iTunes, <laughs> Face, Face, uh, Face Tube, uh, face Book, tube. Book Face, <laughs> yeah, right. Book, Facebook, I Ear. It's all on the interwebs. Um, and there's a show coming up. Remember um, when I saw you uh, in my yard the other day? We had so much fun. That and, doesn't uh, sound good. We <laughs> decided. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I was taking a shortcut. That's, r- that's yeah. right. You had just off. woken up. so You were fully <laughs> clothed, so you're good. Get off my lawn. Get off my yeah. lawn. He, he, uh, you came to our concert, which I yeah. really appreciate. And uh, Ruthie and the Wranglers are going to do it another one on um, August 20th. It's a Thursday night. We'll have the full band out on the deck. And uh, you can uh, check it out on our uh, Ruthie and the Wranglers Facebook page. So um, Cool. That's all right. really all I wanted to make sure I got a chance to tell you. I love seeing you, Dave. It's fun. Like, I run into you all the time, and here yeah. we are on... Getting like, to work like together Like, we couldn't again. see each other any other way. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, well, give us that big encore. Here all we right. go. All right, this one is called I'm Gonna Kill Myself If It's the Last Thing I Do. Never catch up and get back on track, it's the old catch-22 You know I'm gonna kill myself, it's the last thing I do Lots of good comments coming in. Uh, excellent. This is just a good good way I to wrap really that one up. can't really see the comments. Yeah, yeah. But I hope they're all good. Yeah, they are. to everyone who's saying hi to us. I'll have to look at it later yeah. and check yeah, out the thanks comments. Thanks, everybody. Thanks yeah. for watching. All right. Well, Ruthie and Wranglers, uh, Andy and Tom, thank you so much. We're going to move now to Dennis's encore piece where yeah. he's going to say right. hello to everybody. Dennis. Oh, man, you guys all sound so great. 
I just have to say, it's been an absolute treat to be a part of such a great lineup. It's nice to meet you all, nice to hear you all, and see you all. So thanks, Dave, and everybody for, for having me tonight. It's a pleasure. Feelings mutual. Well, at a party. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's a tune with an uplifting message. This is from uh, the 1920s. This was written by the great stride piano uh, innovator, James P. Johnson. This is called Old Fashioned Love. And uh, just because you, you already know, I love telling little stories about the tunes I play. This was the first song that Bob Wills recorded when he got his first uh, recording contract as a band leader. And James P. Johnson's and Bob Wills' versions of this song are extraordinarily different. And, and that's, that's what I love about these tunes as they get passed from one artist to another over the years and over the decades. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit of justice if I can. instruments have been played all right Chris it's time to take us home uh, I wonder if Chris has his mic muted. yeah now nope, there I'm we here, go I'm here. all right man it's sounding beautiful man y'all killing the game it sounds yeah. so good <laughs> oh, thanks such a great you musicianship y'all all right so my friends here we go it's that time it's that time I do one last song for you all okay if you were here in the stream early on i promised i was going to do something special right on this stream and so uh, for the finale i was going to get 10 random words from you all in just just watching this right now live and just because i appreciate y'all being here live and supporting so put 10 words well each contribute words i right? put them down there and i'm gonna use them in a freestyle and rob it's gonna be your job to curate i so I so Rob put on the screen from Terry. Random is the first one. What else you got? What else you got? Give me some more. 
and while and while we're getting the words i'm just gonna get shout outs i so look shout out because because venmo is sending me push notifications shout outs to all the folks that are um that are all, all sending like money and stuff like that and donating all this stuff man we appreciate this journey man thank you so much so i have Kristen over here i got terry that just gave me the word random and then kate and joyce thank y'all so much we appreciate y'all man like that's that's so amazing I, and I'm going to hop over in the chat and see who else is contributing. Ah. Oh, and you know what? I want to get some words also from my fellow from my fellow artists, musicians. I right, so. So, Ruthie and the Wranglers, y'all got to give me some words. Each one of y'all. So, we have love. Love is the second word. Peaches. All right, we got peaches, y'all. We got some interesting words down here, y'all. And don't worry about a word being too difficult. You know, I'm a professional. <laughs> That's what I do for a living. Rap. All right, blunder. And, you know, it might just be a blunder out here, yo. Might be a blunder or two. It happens. It goes down. All right, we have dancing. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we got five words. Oh, you know what? We could cut it out at we could cut it out at eight because you know I got to go to bed soon. I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm trying to get a ten a ten p.m. bedtime. All right. Apocalypse. Oh, we got biscuit. All right. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Time to say cowboy. Seven, eight. Oh, we got two more left, y'all. We got two more. I want to get the tenth and final one of Dave Eisner to, uh, to put on. Yankees. Hold on. Yankees. <laughs> Gotta do it. Gotta do it. Yankees. Right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you know what? Rob has been doing all this stuff too. We want to get him on too. Let's let's get one from Rob. I'll always go with my favorite animal. Bring me something about a rabbit, man. Rabbit? That your favorite animal is a rabbit, my G? <sighs> Bonito. Okay, cool. I can dig it. Tastes like chicken. Hey now. <laughs> and that's where David went. <laughs> Ultimate power. <laughs> Yo, Rob got that dope voice for for a voiceover, man. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. All right, come on. If you need a voice, if you need voiceovers, you know, what I'm saying, or if you you wrote a book and you need a, a, a whole audible type of voiceover situation to read the book, man, hire my dude, Rob. ASAP. <laughs> if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Man. I mean, you might want to hear my Southeast accent, but you know, but oh. I got you. Yeah, that'd be a disaster. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> like, for, for, for my buddy, they'd be like, Chris, you ain't going to talk on him? I'm like, nah, my man got the dope voice, so I just, we put him on. All right, here we go. My friends, I got 10 random words from you all, okay? And I have this instrument. I have this drum right here. And then I have like links and stuff like that. Boom, you could support a brother and all that stuff. I said, look, I'm gonna say all 10 of the words before we jump into it and do it. Here we go. So you can know them when you hear them. The first word we got is random. After random, we got love. Then we got peaches, blunder, dancing, apocalypse. After apocalypse, we got biscuit. After biscuit, we got cowboy. After that, we got Yankees. And the last word from Rob is rabbit. <laughs> all right. Now, I'm going to take all 10 of these random words, make them rhyme, somehow make them make sense while playing this here drum at the same time. So, the mind's going to be doing four to five different things simultaneously. So, before we begin, let's do a little prayer. Mm. All right. Here we go. Let's get it in. You have a job. Say freestyle. Type in the free type in freestyle in the chat. Here we go. 
I say freestyle, a freestyle, 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 a freestyle, freestyle, say freestyle, a freestyle, freestyle, hey, freestyle. A freestyle, freestyle, a hey, chilling in the house, keeping it tall, dark, and handsome. Hitting up the freestyle, the words kind of random, but it's okay with the flow. If you don't like it, you could delete it, but we gonna make it the sweetest like peaches. When I do the freestyle, straight prancing, going through the chat, and I got a brother dancing here. When I play this drum and rock this way, might kick a little something on the little gym bay. Uh, that's how we do it in the house because we not in the club, but it's okay. I still show a young in love out here with the freestyle. How Hot like a summer and I'm trying to avoid a blunder just like that with the freestyle if you miss it it's okay I still toss it to you like a biscuit and you use it and after that I be dip after that I dip I hope we don't catch an apocalypse of the Wi-Fi signal messing up if that <laughs> messes up that will be what's up and I go back with the freestyle like the real McCoy and I hop it out of here like a cowboy freestyle a freestyle 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 a freestyle 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 uh freestyle a freestyle 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 Yes indeed, yes indeed. I look at the list and I think I got three more words to use and more words to choose. So I'ma knock it out without further ado. Uh, my bad, I got two more left. Knocking them all out and I put them on the shelf. This is how I do with the freestyle and the pace to be. I gotta thank my G and he got the hat that's a Yankees at IMT. I get on the freestyle and I MC and do my thing if it's outside. And it's like 400 degrees, uh, with the freestyle, do it like magic, abracadabra, I pull it out like a rabbit, just like that, this right here is the rap habit, I'ma knock it out with a sound that's dramatic. Thank you, my friends. All 10 of your words right there, and that is the freestyle. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Fun party. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was cool. Dave Eisner, I will remind you that when you mute your own mic, I, I can't control it. I just can't bring you back, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there there we go. This was Almost great. ultimate Thank power. Thank you, guys. Almost, yeah. Wow. Um, this, is, this is what fun. What good feeling between all of us, too. It's, you know, it's live. We're hanging out. We're enjoying what we're doing, which is creativity. And you guys certainly brought it tonight in, in many different forms. And it's it all funnels down to being wonderful music, and boy, do we need that this time. We sure do. Oof. Feels good to get together, doesn't it? Man. Yeah. 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 Does. Man. Was there a big storm Oof. where you are, Dave? Nope. nope. I heard thunder a bit here. We're in a, near Annapolis right now. A ton of place. Here in D.C. for sure. Wasn't that just Chris going? <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no. uh, you know. Nice job, guys. <laughs> Amazing yeah. show. Dave Eisner, tell us a little bit about, more about why we're all here, Institute of Musical Traditions, and wish us a good night, man. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're preserving uh, and promoting folk music and its culture, and, and every one of these genres falls into folk music. I mean, you know. If it hangs around for a number of years, as far as I'm concerned, it's folk music. And when I pick that name, Institute of Musical Traditions, it's a little tricky. It sounds like it might be, you know, one of these uh, scholarly uh, ivory white tower. But you guys know that's not what we do. We just we just want to make sure that we have plenty of room for creativity. And you guys you guys brought it into IMT tonight. So it's uh, yeah. Um, well, thanks for putting this together. Man. Yeah. We were yeah, well yeah. represented. Uh, this we're was... going to have to start a band. <laughs> yep. Let's do it. Yep. Chris Stiles, Dennis, and the Wranglers. Yep. I'm freestyling over top of all y'all tunes. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. awesome. Hey, Chris. Oh, do you hey. remember uh, sitting in with Ruthie and the Wranglers one night at the uh, Hamilton? We were up in oh, the Oh, yes. Up, yeah, upstairs. It was yes. totally yeah, jam-packed yeah. with people. We didn't have a drummer that night. And people were knocking my drinks off the table. It was just total disaster mess. It was so fun, though. And, um, oh, we got to do it again, please. And you were in the audience with, um, like, you must have been playing, I don't know, down the road or downstairs or something. And on you were date. with uh, Maureen Andari. On the oh, date. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, no, no, no. We, was hang, we had a show. And we sat in with the Wranglers. And it was a real yeah. highlight of the night. Everybody went oh. nuts. You were, so you were cool. our drummer that night. 
That was great. Man, y'all cats kill, man. Y'all so good, man. Thanks. So, I mean, I, I would love to to um to, to jump in on something on something in the future. If y'all ever see me and we, yep. we see each other, let's let's do it. I mean we'll make it happen. I mean your drum is solid. I'm just gonna write I'm just gonna freestyle. You, you heard it here first, folks. Here it is. You you've heard this future collaboration is That's gonna right. happen and Dennis, you're not going to be far away. Right. We're gonna, I know, we're right? Too. I'll drive down. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Is this before or after you support the new Ruthie and the Wranglers acoustic album, Dave? I think it could be part of it, actually. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Nice. Thanks for reminding him, Rob. <laughs> All right, everyone. We should wave good night. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. We have been shooting musical editions with Dave Eisner hosting Chris and Styles Rob Bacon. On sound. <laughs> and Rob on sound. <laughs> Thanks, man. That was Dennis, so fun. Ruthie and the Wranglers, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for watching, uh, everybody. We do this every two weeks. Please come back. Have a great night, everyone.